So let's say you have a Linux installation, maybe you're using Arch by the way, and you're using a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE, and you're ready to take things to the next level. Let me put it a different way. Let's say you're driving a Volkswagen. It's a great car, it's safe, it's reliable. I love Volkswagens, but what if you wanna feel the speed of a Lambo? You're ready to hop into a Lambo, you feel the earth beneath you, you feel the car moving, everything is crazy, and you just get into the zone. That's what you wanna do in your Linux environment. I mean, sure, maybe if you make a mistake, you drive off a cliff by accident, but you get that pure speed and thrill of using such raw power. Basically what I'm trying to say is in this video, we're gonna install a tiling window manager in our Linux environment. So let's get into it. So welcome back to Linux for Noobs. This is a series that's gonna bring you from zero to maximum productivity with Linux. We're gonna be copying some of the configurations of the best content creators out there that look like they're just flying around their installations and doing programming at just an amazing pace. We're talking about people like the Primogen, TJ DeVries, or I mean, hey, even Typecraft. This series is aimed at people who just want full control over their environment and their development setup so that they can get into the flow state right away and start programming faster than ever before. Now to get this amazing Linux setup, I think we need a tiling window manager. So let's go ahead and install one. We're going to install i3. Now, if you remember from our previous video, by the way, if you haven't seen it, please subscribe and check that out. We already installed Linux, which is Arch, by the way, with a desktop environment already installed called GNOME. GNOME is amazing but we want the raw power of a tiling window manager. So let's go ahead and install i3. We can go to our terminal and using Pac-Man, install i3. Yes, but wait, let's take a step back. What the hell is i3? And what the hell is a tiling window manager? Let me explain. A tiling window manager is a window management system that arranges windows in a grid-like fashion. This is different from a typical window management system that allows you to stack windows on top of one another and use the mouse to kind of move windows around and snap them into place wherever you might want them. A tiling window manager enables you to focus on using just your keyboard, not the mouse, to navigate between your windows, your workspaces, your panels, means whatever. Let me show you a really quick demo. So this is our current Arch Linux installation running GNOME. GNOME is a desktop environment that employs a typical stacked window management system. When you open a window, it opens and you can drag it around with your mouse and you can move things around from side to side. But typically what you do is you focus on using your mouse in order to navigate between all your windows. This is very different than a typical tiling window manager, which I have here. This is an i3 install on my machine. I can open up my terminal with one key press. And if I want, I can open up Firefox with a simple selection and these two windows are now in a grid fashion next to each other. This makes things easy for me to navigate back and forth between my windows left and right, left and right, and I can change the orientation of how these windows are set up. So if I want like a tabbing sort of setup, I can push one button and now my windows are set up in tabs. I can go left and right, left and right. Now they take up the full screen and they're tabbed. I could also split them back out and then I could also select the parent of this and create another Another window over here. Then I can change the layout of all of these. The options are limitless and the best part is my hand never has to leave the keyboard. It keeps me in the zone in programming between NeoVim, Firefox, Discord, whatever. It keeps me in the zone. This is why I love tiling window managers and I love i3. Let me explain a little bit about i3. Now i3 is a tiling window manager that's been around for a very long time. It's based on the Zorg window server protocol and it's been around for so long that it just has a ton of documentation. It has really great plugins and a lot of awesome, well-readable, well-documented code. And there's a lot of configuration examples. It's been around forever. I like i3WM mostly because it's the only tiling window manager that I've actually configured. So it's just something that I'm more comfortable with. Also, I know for a fact that some of the examples that I used before, like the Primogen and TJ DeVries, they use i3WM. So if you want to be like them, you're going to want to use this too. Now, i3WM, I mentioned, is based on Zorg. Zorg is an implementation of the X window system. It's a protocol for window management, and it's been around also for a 
very long time. Now, this is a little bit controversial because Zorg is actually a fairly old piece of technology that's legacy for Linux. Its architecture is kind of a mess. A lot of the code base apparently isn't all that great, and there's some security issues around the platform itself. Now, one funny thing to note, when I visited the Xorg Foundation website, I noticed this logo here. Does this look familiar? Come on, Musk, you're better than that. Anyway, eventually, Zorg is gonna be replaced by another window management protocol called Wayland. Wayland is more modern, it's more lightweight, it has better features, a better API for other developers to use. The list goes on and on. It is going to be better than Zorg eventually. As of right now though, there's some issues with fractional scaling and some other things that just get me back to using Zorg by default. It just makes it a little bit easier to use my systems. I don't know why I've configured Zorg before, the options make more sense to me, and for now Zorg works. But in the future, you're probably gonna wanna switch to Wayland. And what does that mean? Well, i3wm is only for Zorg. It does not work for Wayland. There is a port of i3wm for Wayland. It is called Sway. It is supposed to be a drop-in replacement for i3. So if you're interested in i3 and you want to use Wayland, use Sway. Now there's also one more very, very interesting tiling window manager that's based on Wayland that I think is really, really cool. It's called Hyperland or Hyperland. There's no E there, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Hyperland looks awesome. It's very modern and there's been a lot of community support for it. Seriously, if you go into Reddit and look at the Unix porn subreddit, literally every two posts is someone posting from a Hyperland installation. It looks great, but all things being the same, I'm using i3wm. I can configure it easily. I know how it works and this machine right here is running i3wm, so I'm comfortable with it and I like it, but you can choose your own tiling window manager. Just read the docs and dive right in. It's fun, seriously. And they're all great options. They really are. So now, with that being said, let's get back to our i3 installation that we have in our virtual machine over here. Let me just make this full screen and let's log into the system. So as you remember, we just installed i3 using our terminal. Now to use i3, what we do is we log out of our current session in GNOME and go back to our GDM, GNOME Display Manager. Let's log out. And this, by the way, is why I installed GNOME first on the system. I love using some of GNOME's utilities and programs alongside i3. The main one that I like using is GDM, the GNOME Display Manager. It just makes selecting your desktop environments or window managers much easier, and you can play around with whatever you want. If you want to install Hyperland, you can do that. It'll get picked up by GDM, and you can see in the selection here, we have i3. So let's click on i3 and let's log in. We use our super secure password that we set up in our last video and we're in i3. Isn't this gorgeous? It's absolutely beautiful. I get it, it looks like crap, but we're gonna configure this in future episodes. Let me show you a little bit how it works. Now, one of the coolest things you can do in i3 is open your terminal with just a simple button press. For me, this is gonna be mod. Mod on my machine is the window key. You can also set it to alt. It'll actually prompt you when you first install i3 to set your mod key to either windows or alt. You can easily reconfigure this though, so don't worry. Choose whatever you think is good. Anyway. When you press Alt Enter, it'll open i3 Sensible Terminal, which will auto detect the terminal and open it for you. So we hit Alt Enter and wait, nothing happened? Oh crap. I don't think I have a terminal that i3 recognizes as an i3 sensible terminal. Well, this is a good thing because I want to show you how you can configure stuff even if i3 is broken. There's a simple command here to exit i3. It is Shift Mod E. That will bring up a small menu and you can click yes, exit i3. And again, this is why I wanted to install GNOME on the system alongside i3. In case anything's broken in i3 and you don't really know exactly how to fix it yourself, you can always just log back into GNOME. And so from here, we're back in GNOME, we can install a terminal that we think i3 will actually recognize. So I want to install my favorite terminal, at least lately, is Alacrity. So let's open up our console in GNOME and install. Alacrity. Yes. Now Alacrity is installed. Now we can merely click on log out from GNOME and select i3 from our list right here and log back in. Now if we hit mod enter, it opens up our terminal. It is Alacrity. How cool is this? Now the other thing that i3 ships with is a tool that allows you to search and select programs on your computer. This is called D menu. And typically you type mod D to open up D menu. But wait. It's not loading. Well, that's easy enough. We can just install D menu. Now that we have our terminal, it's easy to install new programs. Okay, we installed D menu. Now let's hit mod D. 
And look, up at the top, we opened a really small program that allows us to search and select programs that we've installed. Now let's install something else like, uh, I don't know, Firefox. Okay, now that Firefox is installed, if I do mod D and start typing fire, I get Firefox as an option. Now if I hit enter, it will open up Firefox in a split on the right hand side of my terminal. Guess what guys, we're using a tiling window manager. How awesome is that? So now let's just look over some of the great things you can do with a tiling window manager. If I hold down the mod key, this allows me to use my arrows to go left and right. So I can switch between my panes left and right. In a future video, we're gonna configure this to use Vim key bindings. It's gonna be amazing trust me anyways you can use mod left right to switch between your panes your windows that you have open on this workspace if you do mod in a number it'll open another workspace corresponding to that number so mod 2 means I open up workspace 2 so now I have workspace 1 workspace 2 now on workspace 2 I can open up anything else maybe just another terminal I can go back to workspace 1 with mod 1 workspace 2 workspace 1 workspace 2 great Awesome. Now, if I want to make any of these screens temporarily full screen, I can do mod F. That makes Firefox full screen. Hitting mod F again brings it back down. If I want to make these into a tabbed screen, I can do mod W. That breaks out these panes and puts them together in a tab-like fashion. So I can go mod left and right, and each window is full screen, but they're tabbed together, so it's easy to go between them. Again, I can go workspace one, workspace two, back to workspace one, and I can go back and forth between my windows. Now, if I want to break out of this I could hit mod E and mod E toggles the orientation of my panes. It goes from vertical split to horizontal split. So if I keep hitting E, it'll go back and forth between a horizontal split or a vertical split. Now from here, I can select the parent, which is the whole entire window with mod A. Now if I open up a new window, it'll open it up above these two windows right here. So if I open up a terminal and then I hit mod E, you can see that my bottom terminal is sort of like its own pane and the top two windows right there are its own pane as well. So I can exit this terminal and I'm back to where I was. Exit. And we can also open up any of the graphical things that we have from GNOME, like, I don't know, calculator. And it might open it up in a huge big screen. If we wanna make this a floating window, we can do shift mod space. That turns this into a floating window. And if you hit shift mod space, you get back into full screen mode, normal mode, whatever you wanna call it. We can open up a terminal right here. And you can see that it's just a really fun and reactive environment to open up windows, open up panes, open up workspaces, and flip between all of them. It's so fun. So that'll do it for installing a tiling window manager, namely i3 in our Arch Linux install. Stick around and subscribe because the next video, we're gonna go over configuring i3, making everything look gorgeous. So remember to stick around and subscribe and hey, thanks nerds.